Before starting this video, let me show you a robot. A robot that you can control with mobile app or remote. A robot that can avoid obstacle and follow line. And it can also help you around. Isn't this cool? At the heart of this robot is Arduino, which enables it to do all this cool stuff. In this video series, we will learn how to make cool robot using Arduino, like the one we just saw. We will also cover C++ programming, microcontroller electronics and robotics fundamental all from scratch. These skills will play a very important role in our robotics journey. There is a lot to cover without wasting any time. Let's get started. Let's understand few concepts with the help of an example. Suppose you want to build a robot that can move around on its own without colliding into obstacle. What are the three core devices that we need? Firstly, we need a device that can measure distance and tell us how far is our robot from an obstacle. Secondly, we need a device that can move our robot around. And lastly, we need a device that can be the brain of our robot. In this case, based on the distance from the obstacle, it can decide whether to keep moving forward or to stop and make a right turn. Each of these devices have a special name, sensors. A sensor is a device that measures physical properties or changes in the environment and convert this information into a signal. Actuators An actuator is a device that converts input signal and energy into physical action or motion. Microcontroller A microcontroller is an integrated circuit that essentially functions as a small programmable computer. And all these devices communicate with each other using signals. In electronics, a signal is a varying electrical quantity that represents information or data. Usually, this varying quantity is voltage. There are two main types of signals, digital and analog. Digital signal only have two states, on or off, whereas analog signal have a range of states. Let's understand the difference by using fan as an example. If we will control the fan using digital signal, we will only be able to turn it on or off. On means 1 and off means 0. Whereas with analog signal, we will also be able to control the speed of the fan. We will have a range of values, in this case, let's say between 0 and 100, 0 means off, 100 means full speed, and 30 means 30% 30 speed, so on and so forth. Now let's pay a closer look at microcontroller. A microcontroller is a tiny programmable computer that takes input, performs some calculation, and generates an output. For input, we have devices like button, potentiometer, sensor, camera, and remote. Similarly, for output, we have devices like LED, buzzer, motor, actuator, and display. Since microcontrollers are quite small and difficult to work with, especially for beginners, we need a microcontroller development board. Here is where Arduino enters into the picture. Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use hardware and software. Arduino simplifies the process of programming and interfacing with various electronics components. It is developed by an Italian company, Arduino LLC. Two key components of Arduino platform are Arduino boards and Arduino IDE. In this video, we will understand Arduino boards there are more than 10 million Arduino boards around the world. These boards are being used to develop cool stuff like IoT projects, 3D printers, hacking tools, drone, automation projects, robots, wearable devices, and a lot more. Arduino boards come in all sorts of size and package. Out of these, Arduino Uno and Nano are mostly used. Let's have a closer look at Arduino Uno. This thing right here is our microcontroller. In Arduino Uno's case, 
it is 8 mega 328p microcontrollers are generally referred to as small computers but they are very different from a computer at the heart of a computer is a microprocessor let's look at the key differences between microcontroller and microprocessor a microprocessor is a processing unit used for only processing purposes it is a part of large system where external components provide memory and input output capabilities they can perform wide range of complex tasks and are typically used in personal computers servers and mobile phones microcontroller is a complete computer system that is embedded on a single chip it is a compact integrated circuit that includes a processor core memory and other additional components like input output peripherals they can perform simple tasks and are mostly used in embedded electronics such as automotive systems consumer electronics etc a typical robotic system has both microcontroller and microprocessor so our microcontroller here is pretty much a standalone device most of the extra components that you see on this board are to make our life easier firstly we have a usb port it is used to connect our arduino board with our computer it is used for uploading programs and sharing data it can also be used to power our arduino board the ic next to it handles the communication between our computer and arduino next we have barrel jack it is used when we need to power our arduino with a battery or an external source like adapter our microcontroller runs on 5 volt but through the power jack we can supply between 7 volt and 12 volt the components next to it takes care of stepping down the voltage to 5 volts reset button it is used to reboot our board it has the same effect as disconnecting and reconnecting the power supply we also have a couple of leds on our arduino board now let's look at these pins which we will use to connect our electronics we have a section of power pins we will use these pins to power our devices next we have 20 digital gpio pins labeled from 0 to 13 on one side and a0 to a5 on the other side these pins can both read and write digital signals hence the term digital gpio which stands for general purpose input output out of these 20 pins there are 6 pins that can also read analog input these pins are from a0 to a5 Point to note here is that these pins can act as digital GPIO and also can read analog input but they cannot control analog output also out of these 20 pins there are 6 pins that have a tilde symbol these pins are called PWM pins and with these pins we can control analog output where to connect what device and how these pin work we will understand these things in coming videos but there is one thing that we should keep in mind since our microcontroller is designed for 5 volt signal we should not connect any sensor or device that uses signal higher than 5 volt to the gpio pins also we should make sure no matter what our 5 volt and ground pin should never connect directly to each other else it will result in a short circuit There are few other components and pin on our Arduino board that we will leave for now. I have a question for you. Have you seen that our Arduino board has both digital and analog pin? So is it an analog device or a digital device? Don't google it. Try to think on your own and write your answer down in the comment section. No one will judge you. Pause the video and write your answer. The answer is all microcontroller and microprocessor are digital devices. and so is our arduino board more specifically the 8 mega microcontroller now a good question to ask is if it is a digital device then how is it able to read analog signal and control analog devices we will understand this and a lot more in the future videos in the next video we will begin with programming and will write our very first arduino program if you guys want to know what path you should follow as a beginner in robotics then you can check out our first video 
प्लीज पे अटेंशन टू द रिसोर्स इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिलो ऑल्सो डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब अवर यूट्यूब चैनल